Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started, but first, Sumatra coffee. Nice. Made in a percolator today. Ground it up. About two and a half cups. Good. Stash is getting a little bit long. I can feel coffee on the ends of the mustache. Might have to do something about that. Hey, how about that you know what? It's something, isn't it? Old things. Old things. I don't think I have one old thing here. A horsehair, a bleached horsehair brush meant to stand up like that. Probably about 75, 80 years old. The type used by a barber. Could tell a lot of stories, couldn't it? If this could talk, that's what I mean when I say old things. I just use it to dust off my computer. It's interesting what this has experienced. It's washed, it's clean. I like it though. I'll put it right here. Old things tell stories, not throwaway things. Throwaway things don't tell stories. But things that tell stories are like pipes, tobacco pipes. Iron skillets, tractors, ladders. I like old purposeful things. And I think about the people that used them. What era they lived in. What their struggles were. Their victories. And decisions that they made. While actually using the old things. I like old things that may have helped people escape and relax. An old porch swing, a fan, church pews, and the accompanying kneelers in the pews. Even old clothes, like old tweed jackets and hats, a scarf. Many of the clothing pieces that I wear are anywhere from 60 to 100 years old, believe it or not. I have a tweed hat, a tweed fedora, 75 years old. I have my grandfather's beaver felt coat, winter coat. It's constructed and put together better than any other garment that I currently own. It's amazing. The stories that old things can tell. Do you like old things? Tell me about it. Put it down below. Tell me about the old things that you have, that you use, not just keep in a museum of your closet or a storage area in the house, but what old things do you use? Do you have a grandmother's iron skillet? Do you have a scarf, a jacket, a tweed coat, a pipe, tools? Do you have power tools or hand tools? from another generation. I used to have a lot of planes. They're interesting, aren't they? Money isn't everything, but it's right up there with oxygen, Jim Rohn. Think about this. We are sending billions of dollars in the United States to countries that hate us. Countries that dance in the streets when an American is killed. Yet we don't have you-know-what tests enough for every citizen in this country. I think it's time that we start caring for our own. Fetching. Fetching. Someone sent me a picture with a face mask. They had a face mask on. 
that they made and said, it's not very fetching. And I'm like, fetching? What's that mean? I had to look it up. Fetching means to be attractive. A fetching woman catches people's interest. Fetching is a word for the sights that capture your interest because of their beauty. So a fetching woman would be a attractive woman. I've never used that word before. I never heard it before yesterday. Have you ever heard the word fetching? Just like when you throw a stick and you want the dog to go fetch the stick. That type of fetching. Spelled the same way. You're never too old to learn. Ever. We're going to rev up the motor scooters when Josie comes home. We're going to park in the streets, sleep on the beach and make it, throw down the jam till the girls say when, lay down the law and break it when Josie comes home. Steely Dan, 1977. I don't know why I thought of that song. I really do like it though. At the height of the pandemic, the EU court has decided it's the right time to announce its verdict. The court will punish Poland, Hungary, and the Czech Republic for breaking EU laws by not taking thousands of migrants under a mandatory EU migrant relocation quota system. How interesting. The safest countries are Poland, Hungary, and the Czech Republic. Because they don't take in thousands of mandatory migrants. The EU is useless, harmful, and a waste of time and a waste of money. They have poor leadership. They always have. They always will. Exit from the EU. I'm planting that in your head. It's no good. You no longer have to live in fear. The EU is not needed. Can you grow a blog from $33 a month to over $100,000 a month? A woman did it. I will put that article down below. Very interesting article about how you can make money with a blog. Yesterday, I got the you-know-what test because I have been exposed. I've worked in buildings where that are now quarantined and there were people who had the you-know-what. So I had access to a pop-up facility where I got the test done. And I ask this, and you saw the video. What if they implanted a chip deep in my head and gave me a virus and are now tracking me and my vitals in real time? You saw where they screwed something in the back of my head and then maybe break it off and unscrew the thing that installs it and pulled it out. That's one theory. Another theory is they were just collecting tissue samples to see if I have the you-know-what. Another theory is that they are collecting DNA samples. I'm wondering if that's happening as well. What are your thoughts about what you saw on the video yesterday? It was very uncomfortable. I can still feel in my head where they with that swab thing. That was not a that was not a cotton swab. It was a bristly, had bristles on it, like a little miniature brush. 
Don't think that was like a cotton swab. A cotton swab wouldn't create the sensation that a bristly thing would. Have you noticed that all news channels now are the VNN? All channels. Interesting how that happened, right? What you doing in there? It's funny when you have pets and their own little pet lives. I made an observation about myself whenever I see any of my pets or anyone else's. If I am having a video conversation with somebody and their dog comes into the video, I always say, good boy or if it's a female, good girl. Hi, good girl. You being a good girl? Good boy. Just automatically, I say good boy or good girl. Why do I treat pets differently than I treat people? Why is it that performance is important with people versus pets? Interesting. I noticed some interesting dynamics two days ago where I work. And I did not experience a good girl. There was a female at work who was exercising her superiority over me. And just about tried to shame or embarrass me in front of a group of people. I thought that was interesting. And then would never make eye contact with me for the rest of the meeting. There are times when I love working by myself. That was one of the times. And there are times where when I have to be with people People, many people just aren't wired or desire to be likable in groups. Stress does a lot of weird things to people, doesn't it? And I remained cool and calm. And the one who has sanity, clarity, and reason. There's a reason why I talk about that. What are some weird circumstances where you work that you just shake your head and it makes you hate your work? And you might want to quit, but you know you can't because you need the money. Isn't it amazing what bullshit we put up with for money? I left that world a long time ago and recently went back into it within the past year on a part-time basis. And it blows my mind what I put up with for money when I gave that up literally 16 years ago. I gave up being an employee a long time ago. And one of my gigs now is as an employee. And everyone, there's no free agents, no free thinking people where I work part time. And everybody I know if I had a private conversation with them, I guarantee everyone would say they're doing it for the money, not for the love of what they do. Interesting what we forfeit for money. And with that, finish your coffee. And I'll see you Monday morning on the Daybreak Show, your home in these crazy times for sanity, clarity, and reason.